So I had a really uh, big day here yesterday. I got in and did this bulkhead and uh, the one up in the forward area there up on that starboard head. So I've got a bit of a problem down in here. Um, this bulkhead, as I mentioned a few times, is a cranked bulkhead. So it actually comes across here and then it elbows up here and joins onto the main central compression bulkhead here. So in fact, elbows like so. Um, as a result, I've got to ascertain the, the size of this bulkhead down in here. Now, I know that this module's in the correct position and there's a second module, which is actually a large saloon or salon dinette, uh, like a big booth module that actually goes in behind it, which backs up against that one there. So what I need to do is I need to make a bulkhead that is going to fit that area there. And that's going to take a bit of templating because it is actually on the chamfer panel. And, um, and what you can see down in there, but what it's going to do is it's going to actually intersect with that main bulkhead here, this one here, but also come along and join onto the back of that particular module and actually glue to it. And then the dinette module will then glue to that. So there's, it's gonna be like a, like a wooden sandwich of, uh, of module glass, sheathed glass plywood, and then another module backed onto it. So incredibly strong. And, uh, and we'll deal with any structural issues uh, at hand, but then it actually elbows again to intersect here and ultimately provide me with a mast post or a, or a mast king post or a mast bulkhead as well. So there's lots to do down in here. Okay, so that's in. Um, I've got to come up with a piece that's gonna intersect all the way from here, but it's actually going to end here at the bulkhead, but continue on and join up with the center uh, masthead bulkhead so there's a little bit to do here I need to remove obviously this part of the central bulkhead and uh, that's where she's going to end there and then that'll continue through into the other side through here and end about here because that's pretty much where the mast is going to sit is right on this spot here so uh, a little bit of complicated sort of uh, factoring to do here well, we've had a good hour and a half of uh, working out here. Here's my pencil. Uh, Johnny, Johnny's had the string line out and we've got it sorted. And we know how much Johnny loves his string line. But uh, down here, we've had to work out this intersecting bulkhead here. And Johnny's down here with a, uh, with a sliding bevel. And he's, uh, he's working out the angle that we need to cut this main bulkhead to allow for this one to intersect through. That's going to be like oh, I see 20 mil. Saying. See what I mean? And it's going to be so wider, it's going to have another that. layer of glass on it. So let's put... So we need to cut a piece of timber with that width We've to get the We've got to get, get this angle right. With... So after all of that, we actually worked out that uh, I've got to cut this angle here on this bulkhead and my saw is not going to cut it, so it's going to be a handsaw. Uh, I'm going to have to clamp a piece of straight edge on this side and onto the other side here. That just took a great deal of... Uh, of, of angst and we had string lines and bloody laser levels in the works and we've worked out that I need to cut this bulkhead here at this angle. The only thing is that my compound or my skill saw won't cut at the angle. It's around about 25 degrees. So it's not really a, a very uh, easy angle. So it looks like it's a hand saw. I'm just gonna go very, very gingerly down this line here. And uh, you know, ultimately it's probably not gonna be as critical because it's gonna be tabbed in glass anyway, but uh, you know, you try to get as close to the angle as possible, but yeah, it's gonna be a bit of an effort and uh, probably a good hour of hand cutting with a saw. It's been a long time since I've used a hand saw uh, to a level of accuracy. Hand scarfing with the pros. Right, the last bit of plywood for the week. I'm uh, just about done cutting wood. There's so much woodwork's gone into this bit. I'm not really um, happy about putting wood in my boat, but at least it's all above the waterline. Set that, cut that out. That piece will just fit in beautifully. What do always go and double check my measurements. Always. So in the time that I measured it, and came up and drew it, I'd moved the cameras around three or four times, and guess what? I'd forgotten the measurement, and I measured it wrong, so luckily I didn't cut, so my plan paid off. Always measure twice, cut once. <laughs> Uh, 
Now the one thing they don't tell you when you're boat building is that when you put your bulkheads in, life gets really hard. You've got to climb over the top of them and down. Every time you need to go up to the front compartment, you've got to go over or down into the hull and through a door. Now I don't have doors in this bulkhead or in the one up front. So there's going to be a lot of ladder work once the glass is in. So I'm trying to avoid that. I will be cutting some access holes. Like so. Oh, yep. that is so save a bit of squaring up. Um, the great thing is here, you'll notice that I've actually left a, a small area right here. Um, there was no point in me cutting it to that piece because ultimately that's going to be glassed the module there. And uh, you know, it's just a little bit of extra strength, but not really a lot to be gained. But the great thing is I can actually, once I get these in place, I can fillet and tab this bulkhead this bulkhead this bulkhead all in place and then ultimately we can lift these modules vertically straight out so that i can then um then reinforce them where needed and then just sit them straight back in place and glue them in place and they're done now you can see the bulkhead's actually designed to go on that line here, but this purlin is in the way. So tomorrow what I'll do is I'll actually move that back about a foot, which will give me room to put this in place. Now this purlin actually ultimately has to go, but the problem with it is, is it's actually holding the whole sides in and I don't want to let it go because once I let it go, I've lost the measurement for my um my deck width and that was all taken into account when i first did it but yeah for now that bulkhead's perfect in place and uh and ready to go and pretty much i can uh, start to laminate these and get them glassed in and then i can work on this large central bulkhead which is here there's a 25 millimeter ply bulkhead that goes along this line here and that forms a separating uh, uh, bulkhead and a mast bulkhead, which actually sits right here. So this here will be a like a, a sectioned uh, king post for the mast to sit on, and my mast basically sits right there. So I'm going to have to beef all this up. Not really sure how I'm going to do that because uh, there's a lot going on in there. That'll be a pretty tight um, area to have to to glass in there but at least it's an area where I know that I can get all of my wiring and uh, conduiting down from the mast and down into the hull. So you can start to see the cabin space now. This is actually the base of the double bed which goes that way and then this here will ultimately be a full bulkhead which I've just ordered. That's a 25 millimeter uh, high grade marine ply with a layer of 600 double bias on each side. So it's a pretty serious piece of timber um, which will form the main uh, longitudinal stringer, I guess, of the, the bow of the boat. And that's gonna give this boat a hell of a lot of strength. But this here um, is essentially the complete cabin. So you can see the cabin here from the door right through this bulkhead here all the way along. Now this is actually a bit lower, so it's going to go, the roof will go up like this. But yeah, plenty of room in here. It's, it's actually surprising how big it is. It is in fact a 200 millimeters longer than the cabin on the other side because it is the master suite here. So quite a big bedroom. I mean, in fact, I'd have to say that that's probably about 10 foot long there. Uh, that head is putrid. I might get in and vacuum that tomorrow and put a cover on it. Um, but up here, you can really see how big this room is. I mean, that is the base of a double bed. So it's it's a big, big cabin. So we've got Billy down in the bilge there. The main bulkhead. And as you can see, it actually cranks across all the way across to the other side. So it's a bit of an odd shape and that gives us that copious bedroom. And also uh, the ability to put a chart table right here. So the chart table is here. And then uh, obviously the main cabin. 
I'll just give you a bit of a look inside the robe in the bedroom, um, in the main forward stateroom. Now that's a huge robe. That is six foot long by about sort of two foot wide at the top and then probably a foot wide at the bottom. Now right down on the chine there's going to be a shelf there. All my water pumps uh, are going to be inside that cabinet. I've been in a bit of a templating frame of mind as of late and uh, you know just doing this back wall has given me so much more foresight into the way the layout's going to be inside this uh, saloon, salon, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've just gone over here, if you have a look at this thing here, uh, that's actually a template I took off the galley mould and there's a reason why I've done that is because I needed to, uh, to work out exactly where all the internal road partitions like with this back wall here it's allowed me to work out where this intersects with the outside wall it's been able to give me an exact measurement of the width of the deck mold so there's a whole lot of reasons why templating is a good idea lots of work but it does actually reaffirm everything uh, in your mind before you go uh, headlong into chopping up glass and making foam sheet but the galley mold here um, the galley template that's basically where it lays there it has a small part of a bifold door that is always shut there and that's where all the doors will open from this side across to the uh, to the galley there so it actually protrudes into the doorway a little bit but it's actually where the door ends so it's like a bifold door a four panel door that closes or opens against the uh, the kitchen module there so if you have a look at this template here this actually is a large island that comes out and then back in and then comes back out again and uh, and essentially this is an exact representation of my um, galley mould that I have up the back there. Now it's a little bit big and a bit awkward to get out so it's not something I can just whack up in five minutes. So this template gives me a really good idea. Essentially there's going to be two sinks in here, uh, in this area here. There will be a, uh, a convection microwave oven and a stove top on top. So it really uh, good to see it in this sort of form and I know Teal on Onboard Lifestyle has a similar sort of module, a little bit larger there galley. Um, but he's actually brought this island out into the into the middle of the boat and you'll notice it's also rounded so obviously no sharp corners and uh, nothing to catch yourself on but of concern is this part where it's actually overhanging over this uh, companionway module um, that actually has to have a four floor built out level and then down so there's a lot of structure to go in here and stuff that I can pretty much template right now knowing that I know what I know where the back wall is where everything else is, I can start to configure these shapes so that uh, to get them all almost glassed in place once the floor goes down, I can almost prefabricate that now and then have it ready to go in as soon as that floor goes down. So the fit out of this boat really relies on, um, on a lot of templating first and then ultimately it will move pretty quickly once I get to that stage. So as I showed in last week's video, I uh, started laminating these smaller uh, component bulkheads such as the forward uh, starboard head there and some of the smaller um, intersecting bulkheads as I've just shown you in the video earlier. And, uh, and the important thing is to let this plywood soak and then uh, let it actually dry or at least tack off before you start putting on your substrates because if you if you just whack your substrates on straight away there's a good chance that it's actually going to adhere to the substrate and not to the to the plywood in fact so that's a very very important part of preparing plywood and there was a lot of laminating went on this went on for about around about a week i guess uh, where i was just doing sheet after sheet after sheet and uh you know it's quite pleasing to get such a massive amount done but the key is getting set up and getting it done at the at the same time rather than trying to go back and retrospectively fit out your factory ready to go again and uh, and you know i i hand it over to anyone that can do this sort of stuff up on the side itself i will be doing the main bulkheads actually on the on the boat itself but uh these smaller ones much easier in the factory where i've got uh you know a lot of room to walk around and uh certainly got all the equipment at hand i don't have to keep trafficking stuff back up and down onto the mold itself
actually not a bad day's work, really. All right, guys, next morning, um, I epoxied the scarf joint on this yesterday, and I'm just coming to check it, and the epoxy's actually gone off really well. It was a pretty warm night here last night, so always good to see uh, a little bit of heat, and that helps with the exothermic reaction. It basically uh, helps to uh, sort of force cure it a little bit if we get a really hot night. We're heading into the, the high 30s this week. Uh, it's only October, so a bit concerned about summer. It's going to be 38 here on Friday. That's 38 degrees. That's I think that's 100 in your scale over in the States. Uh, however, that is not great for me. Uh, it's not a good uh, mixture of working with such high heat and, and chemicals. It's great for curing, but you've got to get it down fast. So um, the scarf's looking pretty good here. We've got a good, uh, good bond, and I'm going to remove this batten that I've put in here. So due to the fact that it's so long, it's very hard to clamp, there's really no other choice other than to batten it together or to uh, you know, put weights on it or whatever, but always make sure you put plastic down or you're gonna end up with a two by four stuck to the, uh, stuck to your, uh, your panel. So in drilling and screwing that batten down, I've got this perfect uh, dead flat scarf bulkhead. The problem is I've got all these holes. You would never leave a hole in plywood or foam or anything without coring it with epoxy. So I'm gonna mix up some of this stuff, which is the thickened epoxy. And, and this is a perfect filler because it has an incredible um, vertical hold as well. So it's very, very good for gap filling. Doesn't actually seep out. And I'm going to seal these holes, uh, every hole that in the in these bulkheads with this epoxy, just to make sure that I get absolutely no chance of water ever ingressing into these um, into these pores. And uh, and I like to use a syringe to fill holes. Um, I know that's probably a bit unorthodox, but it means that I can get a really good squeeze in. You could use a plastic bag, I guess, with um, like a piping bag. But by putting this syringe in it, I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna fill these holes adequately on both sides. Okay, so that's all sanded neatly now. It's basically uh, down level. There's a couple of low spots, which I'll fill with uh, uh, a fume silica and a filler. And, uh, and then I'm basically going to wet it out and leave it overnight uh, to ensure that I get a good bond between the plywood and the resin. And then I'm gonna come back in tomorrow, like I've done with all the other uh, bulkheads, and then I'm gonna laminate that 600 double bias onto it. Look at that. You think it's clean. It's never clean enough. That rag is absolutely sodden with sawdust and impurities that uh, ultimately will affect your laminate. All right, final look. Look at that. Yuck. That is just unbelievable how much that uh, has picked up just in one watt. So imagine if I did it two or three times, which I will, you'll end up with a really clean substrate and a brilliant bond. As that sets, that's going to force cure on there on a hot day like today. And I've got the fan blowing the styrene off, and uh, and right now I'm out of here. And uh, this now has gone off. It's basically, you know, you can touch it. I've just given it a really light sand because I noticed there was a couple of little um, uh, pieces of lint and, and fabric from the cloth that I wiped it off with. You can never be prepared enough. I vacuumed that twice to make sure I got everything off it uh, before I did the. Um, 
the acetone watt and then I've still got lint on it so I've just sanded all that back it's just going to become part of the cloth but it's important imperative in fact to get this uh, these bits of plywood and the resin dead flat so that the next layer goes down with zero voids and uh, that's going to go down now so one layer of 600 double bias layer of peel ply and it's done for the day. So I was up here last night um, doing a few little jobs and I thought I'd just check if this is okay and I've trimmed the peel ply back but what I've got to now do is go and get my multi-tool and give this a, a quick trim around the outside. Now I could have green trimmed this edge here um, if I'd been on time but you know sometimes you just can't hang around and, uh, and although it's uh, always advisable to green trim. Sometimes you just can't get around to it. So you're better off to just let it go off, come back and trim it with that multi-tool because it's pretty, uh, it's not that aggressive on the uh, on the substrate, on the edge of the substrate. So it means I can just get uh, moving with this today. Here we are, beautiful uh, sunny Lake Bled. And Janet's got a bit of a Romanian expression going on her face there. I like sun. <laughs> How you going, Nanook? I'm good. It's a bit wet for you, buddy. No, I'm fine. Look how the trees are changing colour, which we're not, we don't see. It's now. absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to check this out. Sunny Slovenia. Look at this, how beautiful this is. What a gorgeous scene. It's a bit breezy and it's a bit wet, but look at the old church out here. It's one of the more popular places for weddings in uh, Slovenia. And you know, just gorgeous place. But So we're walking through the uh, Slovenian countryside. We've been taking on a bit of a trail. We're, we're actually out in nature, aren't we? Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. We could have driven up here, but where we're staying is about a 45 minute walk up through uh, these magnificent fields and up through there's three or four small Slovenian villages here and so much building going on here this place is about to hit a uh, a tourist invasion I think oh I'm having a bit of a pant at the top of that hill we were going to hire a bike but glad we didn't because we would have to walk it most of the way anyway Vinca Gorge wow this is cool. It's time for us to have our um, Kremsnitsa, I guess it's called. Um, I've been putting this off because I've actually dieted for three months before this trip. And I'm looking at that thinking, hmm, don't know. It could go straight to my hips, that one. <laughs> but we'll have to do it. I'm just going to have to take one for the team, all you guys. I'm sorry. We've got it pretty sewn up here. They've got Everything has a fee, doesn't it? Right, you need to pay to pee. Well, <laughs> Here's your ticket, mate. Work out how you use the thing. Alright. Awesome, eh? Oh, what a cracker! Oh, this is a standout, this place. There's so many people here, but oh, what an incredible place. 
It's a Vinca Gorge up from Lake Bled. You come to Slovenia, you've got to come here. It's worth the walk from Bled up to here. All right, we've come to the infinity pool. Ooh, that's a bit of a drop. <laughs> oh, you read my mind. I don't want coffee. Beer. I was thinking it might have been a bit early for this, but no. <laughs> There's no time that's not too early for a beer. We're not gonna do the tourist walk back. We're gonna take a walk through the wilderness. And uh, yeah, this is cool. So there's a bit of a trail. Comes back to Katarina and Zazip. It's a good job we did a bit of uh, extreme dieting and fitness before <laughs> we came on this trip. Popular, yeah, this is pretty muddy. It's a boggy trail. It's a bit wet here yesterday. We had a, uh, a huge downpour for about the last three days. So. Here we are finally getting out doing it. This friggin' hill never ends. It's hot and it's hilly <laughs> and I'm friggin' naked. Great. It's awesome. <laughs> She's had a gut full of me here. <laughs> Haven't you, hun? Had a gut full. It's so pretty. It's pretty beautiful, but it's very steep. <laughs> We've reached the top. That was a. Oh, a bit of an effort. Anyway, have a bit of a pant for a second and uh, check out the vista. Occasionally it's just so worth turning around and having a look what you've come from. That's pretty beautiful, isn't it? I have to say, it's just gorgeous. Look at this. Oh. So I reckon old mate's gonna have a bit of a hag at it here because he can't get through the jack. So he's gonna chuck it. Yeah, watch. Here we go. Holy Jesus! Oh! So in all, Janet and I spent seven days in Slovenia. It's a absolutely mind-blowing little country. It only has two million people and everybody speaks English and they all were so welcoming and what an amazing place. I mean, the walks and the nature. Um, I do have to say that Janet tended to punish me for that trip because every day was something like a 30 odd kilometer walk, which is around about 18, 19 miles. So we did a lot of walking and to be honest, that's what we went there for. It, it's just an incredible place. And if you ever get a chance to get there, it really highlighted to us how important it is to just switch off and go to a place where there's, uh, you know, virtually, uh, no interruptions and we loved every second of Slovenia. Our next part of our trip is off to Croatia so don't forget to like the video if you liked it guys don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time on Life on the Hulls. Thanks for joining us. See ya, bye.